In this presentation, I will introduce an uh, extracellular vesicle exosome based on recent two review papers. Intercellular communication is an essential hallmark of multicellular organisms and can be mediated through direct cell cell interaction or transfer of secreted molecules. In the last two decades, through mechanisms of intercellular communication has emerged that involves inter intercellular transfer of extracellular vesicles. These vesicles are generally referred to as the microvesicles, ectosomes, shedding vesicles or micro microparticles, among others. The term exosome was initially used for vesicles ra ranging from 40 to 1000 nanometer that are released by a variety of cultured cells but the cellular origin of these vesicles remained unclear. Intercellular communication with extracellular vesicles originated through at least three mechanisms. First, the fusion of multivascular bodies with the plasma membrane and the release of their intraluminal vesicles as exosomes. Second, blabbing of the cellular plasma membrane. At last, breakdown of dying cells into apoptotic bodies. Extracellular vesicles, which are secreted into the, the extracellular environment, contain functional mRNA, microRNA, and DNA molecules that can be taken up by recipient cells through mechanisms including fusion with the plasma membrane, pygocytosis, and endocytosis. One of extracellular vesicles, exosome has an elaborated structure. The first figure shows that Exosomes isolated from melanoma cells were con constructed with uranium acetate and embedded as a whole mount preparation in methyl cellulose. There are artificial cup shape appearance and heterogeneous size ranging from 30 to 100 nanometer. Second figure represents that exosomes from prostate epithelial cells were directly frozen and observed by cryo electron microscopy without chemical fixation or contrasting. Exosomes appear round. All exosomes contain proteins involved in membrane transport and fusion, such as red proteins and annexins, cytoskeletal proteins, adhesion molecules, and tetraspanins, as well as the RNA. Exosome membranes are enriched in rapid lipids, such as cholesterol, ceramide, and sphingolipids. From biogenesis to exocytosis of exosomes, the, mecha the mechanism has been discovered for details. The animatic figure shows that the release of multivasculars and exosomes. Multivascular endosomes body directly from the plasma membrane, whereas exosomes are represented by small vasculars of different sizes that are formed against the interluminal vesicles by budding into early endosomes and multivascular endosomes and are released by fusion of multivascular endosomes with the plasma membrane. Other multivascular endosomes fuse with lysosomes. The point of divergence between these, ty these types of multivascular endosomes is drawn at early endosomes, but the ex existence of distinct early endosomes feeding into these two pathways cannot be excluded. Red spots symbolize clustering associated with the vesicles at the plasma membrane or bilayered clustering coats at endosomes. Membrane associated and transmembrane proteins on vesicles are represented as triangles and rectangles, respectively. Arrows represent the proposed directions of protein and lipid transport between organelles and between multivascular endosomes and the plasma membrane for exosome secretion. And black rectangles represented 10 images of multivascular endosomes and exocytosis of exosomes. Over the past years, very diverse biological functions have been attributed to exosomes, and it is now commonly accepted that exosomes and multivasculars represent important vehicles of inter intercellular communication in between cells locally at or at a distance. Membrane-associated and transmembrane proteins and RNAs are selectively incorporated into the intraluminal vesicles of multivascular endosomes or into multivascular bodies from the plasma membrane. 
multivascular endosomes fuse with the plasma membrane to release exosome into the extracellular environment. Multivascular and exosomes may duct at the plasma membrane of a target cell with three methods. First, bound vesicles may either fuse directly with the plasma membrane. Second, will be endocytosis. At last, endocytosis, endocytosis vesicles may then fuse with the delimiting membrane of an endocytic compartment. Both pathways result in the delivery of proteins and RNA into the membrane or cytosol of the target cell. Vision and endocytosis are only represented for exosomal vesicles, but plasma membrane-derived multivascular may have similar fates. In the early 19th, exosome secretion by reticulocytes was reported as a mechanism to eradicate obsolete molecules. Soon thereafter, it was shown that dendritic cells produce exosomes with the capacity to stimulate T cell responses. Later, the capacity of exosomes to act as antigen, pre antigen pre presenting vesicles to stimulate anti tumor immune responses, or rather to induce telogenic effects, has stimulated the interest of immunolog immunologists to investigate their potential use in clinics. Tumor cells, as well as other cells in tumor microenvironments, also secret exosomes and microvesicles. And there is evidence that this contributes to tumor progression by promoting angiogenesis and tumor cell migration in metastasis. Tumor-derived vesicles also bear immunosuppressive molecules which can inactive T lymphocytes or natural killer cells or promote the differentiation of regulatory T lymphocytes or myeloid cells to suppress immune responses. And recent studies reported the association of membrane-bound morphogenes to exosomes, including UNT and the notch ligand DLF4. Through UNT signaling, fibroblast exosomes have recently been demonstrated to promote breast cancer cell dynamics. Functions of exosomes have also been reported in epithelia and in the nervous system. Exosomes are released apically or vasolatory by intestinal epithelial cells appear to be involved in antigen presentation at inflammatory conditions. And these exosomes may confer the ability of static epithelial cells to act, as, act at a distance. In the airways, exosomes present in the bronchial alveolar fluid bear tolerized molecules or conversely, conversely may increase through inflammatory cytokine secretion by airway epithelial cells in asthmatic human patients. Today, I briefly introduced a two review paper about exosom. Then, what will the future bring in the field of exosom research? Today's two reviewers and great exosom masters, Greco Raposo and Clifford V. Hardling, predict that. In, in addition to their importance to fundamental mechanisms of intracellular communication, signaling, and regulation, exosomes and other extracellular vesicles may have important clinical applications in the future. There is much interest in the potential for diagnostics based on analysis of exosomes as they may bear the protein or RNA signature of pathological or physiological state of their source cells. Because exosomes may traffic from tissue sites to blood, urine, or other body fluids that are easily accessible, they may make such signatures available for diagnostic utilization. Furthermore, the potential of, for RNA-bearing exosomes to influence or regulatory response cells suggest the possibility of therapeutic application for cancer, amelioration of pathological immune responses, and other applications. May the next 30 years bring yet more advances. Thank you.